let's take a look at the last problem on this worksheet. Okay, this is a car turning a banked curve with a radius and with friction. It says if the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road is 0.6, what is the maximum speed at which the corner in problem 4 can be navigated? Okay, we know the radius is 50 meters from before and the angle is 17 degrees. And anytime you have a problem like this, the best thing to do is to find all the forces that act. Remember, when anything's moving in a circle, the net force is going to be the centripetal force, right? So that's what I have written over here. I have the net force in the x direction is actually the centripetal force. It causes it to move in the circle. The net force in the y direction is equal to zero because the car does not move up or down the incline. The other thing is, is usually on a ramp we say, let's make the let's make the coordinate system follow the incline but when you're in a centripetal force situation that's towards the center of the circle not down the ramp it's actually better to let x and y remain horizontal and vertical okay so i've got to find my net forces in x and my net forces in y and so over here i've labeled the normal force and i've labeled gravity and then there's one more force right here this is static friction and it's acting down the incline because this is the maximum speed and when you go too fast you tend to drift up the incline so friction has to act to pull you down the incline Okay, and then I have their components drawn because um, X and Y are horizontal and vertical there's the normal force in Y, there's the normal force in X, there's static friction in X and there's static friction in Y so then I just came over here and I said alright well let's start adding up all our forces we gotta keep X and Y separate so here we go uh, net force in Y is the normal force in the Y direction minus mg because those two pull in opposite directions minus fsy and so mg is negative and fsy is negative because they both pull down and that equals zero because the net force in y is zero and then here i started plugging in numbers that i know okay um fny minus mg well static friction is really the normal force times the coefficient of static friction and then I had to multiply by the sine of the angle because we're just talking about the y direction of force okay? then I've done the same thing over here to get the normal force in the y direction FNY cosine of the angle minus mg minus FNUS sine theta equals zero now in this equation I actually have a couple unknowns I don't know the normal force I do know the angle I don't know the mass I do know gravity don't know the normal force, I do know the angle. Alright, so then I was thinking, okay, I have two unknowns in this equation, I'm not going to be able to solve it exactly, but I can figure out how the normal force is related to everything. So I added mg over, then I pulled the normal force out, right? The normal force is multiplied on both these terms, so I undistributed it, and then I divided by the cosine, and I've got the normal force is equal to the cosine of theta minus mu s sine theta okay now I don't know m but I know the rest of these then down here I switch to the x direction okay and if I look in the x direction I've got the normal force in x which is really fn sine theta plus the static friction in x those two are in the same direction they're both directed towards the center of the circle plus mu s fn cosine theta that gets me the x direction of friction is equal to centripetal force but centripetal force is mv squared over r so then i've got all this and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to pull out uh... well okay actually i subbed in this for the fn term and then simplified it all down and got this big long nasty equation but mass was in every term so it canceled out and so then all I had to do is plug in the terms that I know and I was able to solve for V Okay. now this is why I don't want you guys to use formulas or memorize formulas when you're solving something Okay, a formula only helps in one particular instance the key is being able to actually look at this and identify the forces that are acting and adding them all up Okay. So I want you to work through this problem, follow along with my work, see if you can get there. Okay, and then I want you to actually do the other thing. Okay, I'm going to change the angle on you and I'm going to say, if the angle's 35 degrees, what's the minimum speed at which you can turn this corner?